Hello, my name is Monica Aguirre, and I'm with Prairie View a and Cooperative Extension Program. I'm a family and community health agent in Bear County, and today we're going to be discussing disaster preparedness and how to have our family get prepared in case of a disaster. The importance of disaster and emergency management planning is because disasters are increasing in frequency and in intensity. Today we will cover an overview of disasters, why prepare, how do we prepare a kit, and make a plan. And also it is important that we be informed. In 2017 alone, we had multiple disasters throughout the United States, costing billions of dollars. These included wildfires, floodings, tornadoes, hurricanes, and freezes. The Texas Gulf Coast region is prone to hurricanes and other disasters. Disasters can range from inconvenient to devastating, but taking some simple preparedness steps in advance can minimize their impact and make a big difference in ensuring the safety and well-being of individuals, families, businesses, and communities. Being prepared and having a plan can reduce fear and anxiety before and during a disaster. What people do before a disaster can make a dramatic difference in their ability to cope with and recover from a disaster as well as their ability to protect other household members and family possessions from avoidable losses. Although some extra planning is necessary, you don't have to do this alone. In addition to the education you're about to receive, other resources can help you with your family preparedness plan. A few are listed here. For example, ready.gov, American Red Cross, Community Emergency Response Teams, local businesses, faith-based organizations, and extension services. To help provide structure in how you can prepare, FEMA, the American Red Cross, and other organizations encourage individuals and families to get a kit, make a plan, be informed, and get involved. We will discuss each of these steps to preparedness. You may need to survive on your own after a disaster. This means having your own food, water, and other supplies to last at least three days. The more severe the disaster, the longer you may be on your own. Local officials and relief workers will be on the scene after a disaster, but they cannot reach everyone immediately. That's why it's vital to have a supplies kit on hand to be able to sustain yourself until assistance is available. In addition, Basic services such as electricity, gas, water, sewage treatment, and telephone may be cut off for days. You will need one gallon of water per person and pet per day for at least three days. If possible, try to store at least enough water for a week. A half a gallon is for drinking and a half a gallon is for food preparation and sanitation. Although you may bottle your water on your own, Commercially bottled water is recommended as the safest and most reliable emergency supply of water. Bottled water should be kept in its own original container and not opened until needed. Rotate your water supply every six months and use it before the expiration or use by date. Store at least a three-day supply of non-perishable foods. Plan on about 2,000 calories per day per person and avoid foods that will make you thirsty. Include high energy foods such as peanut butter, jelly, low salt crackers and nuts. Also granolas, whole grain cereals and canned foods that can be eaten cold, especially those with high liquid content such as canned fruits. Dry mixes and other staples that do not require refrigeration, cooking, water or special preparation also belong in your kit. Include a few comfort or stress release foods, such as sweetened cereals, candy, instant coffee, or cookies. You already may have many of these on hand, but companies sell emergency foods that can be stored for long term. Remember to consider dietary needs of infants, older people, and those on special diets, and pack a manual can opener. Consider emergency heating and cooking alternative sources, such as solar oven, 
solar cooker, or alcohol fuel fondue pot. Follow manufacturer's storage recommendations and rotate food and water every six months, maybe when daylight savings times changes. Additional items for disaster kits include clothing, blankets, personal hygiene items, a battery or wind-up flashlight, extra batteries, a whistle to blow for help if you need to be found, toilet paper and a plastic pail, cleaning towelettes, mosquito spray, and other items that would help you carry out your family's disaster plan. Be sure to include a battery powered or wound up radio, like an NOAA is best. And many crank ones include USB chargers for smartphones. Especially if you have young children, include comfort items such as a favorite doll or toy or book. This item will help to ease the stress and transition. Games and cards can comfort adults too. Be sure to include prescription medication, other specialized medical supplies, and a first aid kit. You can purchase a first aid kit or assemble one at home using checklists available at www.ready.gov or www.redcross.org. Include items such as bandages, gauze pads, scissors, needles, antiseptic, thermometer, safety pins, cleaning agents, and latex gloves. Also include non-prescription drugs such as aspirin, anti-diarrhea medication, antacids, and any other medications your family would use. When packing for an infant, you will need to add items that consume a lot of space. Plan ahead for your child's needs and refresh this kit often as the baby grows. Here are some items to consider, like baby formula, baby food, diapers and wipes, clothing, blanket, pacifier, pain or fever reducer and vitamins, toys and books. Have children help prepare their own kits and decide whether they should be stored. You may find that in their bedroom closet or under their beds may be an appropriate place to store their kits. Include comfort items and activities such as books, puzzles, or small computerized games. Remember to refresh their kits and replace clothing as the children grow. Write out identification information for the children, including cell and out-of-state contact phone numbers in case the children get separated from you. Involving children in disaster preparedness and being able to carry their own items will help them understand possible situations and reduce their fear. Older people need to include in their kits prescription medications and copies of the written prescriptions, medical supplies such as glasses, hearing aids, and oxygen, and important documents such as insurance forms and Medicare and Medicaid cards. Include in the to-go kit a laminated page listing chronic illnesses, current medications, and latest surgeries. Here's an activity parents can use to help children understand the importance of what's in an emergency kit. First, make sure young children understand this is practice, not a real emergency. Give each family member a pillowcase, garbage bag, or similar container and have them gather things from around the house that they need for three days. After five minutes, discuss what each person selected. Based on the supply selected, will you be hungry? Will you be thirsty? Will you have warm and dry clothing? Did you remember to bring something you want to have with you, like a toy or a special photo? Begin the process by completing a family emergency plan document, like this one at www.ready.gov. Fill in phone numbers, out-of-town contacts, meeting places, and information about each family member. Include how to communicate with family members, school and work contacts, and other important information. Know the school's policy about when children will be evacuated or held at school, and plan for children in child care. Have a family meeting to talk about this information and what you would do if family members are not home when a warning is issued. For a disaster that is affecting more than one home, the first important decision is whether you stay where you're at 
or evacuate. Plan for both possibilities. In the event of a disaster, watch TV, listen to the radio, or check the internet often for information or official instructions as it becomes available. Then either evacuate or shelter in place. This decision will be based on what you have learned or been instructed to do. Shelter in place means to take immediate shelter where you are, at home, work, or school. Your family must plan for the possibility of sheltering in place. Plan a safe room in your home. FEMA provides these guidelines for a safe room. Choose a small interior room without windows or large mirrors. Shelters should be below ground for tornadoes, but above ground for chemical releases. Because warning times for tornadoes can be very short, quick access to the safe room is important in choosing the location. Go to the basement or an interior room on the lowest level away from windows, doors, and outside walls. Safe rooms often are used for other non-emergency purposes. Bathrooms and large closets are a frequent choice. Consider special accessibility needs of family members and pets when choosing the location and design of your safe room. If there's a chemical, biological, or radiological release, shelter immediately in an interior room typically on the ground level, unless recommended otherwise by local authorities. If you have time, turn off ventilation and heating systems and close windows, vents, fireplace dampers, exhaust fans, and closed dryer vents. Use plastic sheeting and duct tape to seal vents, doors and windows to keep out contaminants. However, the longer you and your family spend in a sealed environment, the less oxygen and the more carbon dioxide will be produced. Extended lack of oxygen and carbon dioxide exposure could cause illnesses or possibly death. With 10 feet of space for each individual, you should have enough air for three to five hours in a sealed room. While sheltering in place, stay tuned to local radio stations or an official internet site for instructions. Evacuations are more common than many people realize. Hundreds of times each year, transportation and industrial accidents release harmful substances, forcing thousands of people to leave their homes. Fires and floods cause evacuations even more frequently. Almost every year, people along the Gulf and Atlantic coast evacuate in the face of approaching hurricanes. Your family should create evacuation plans for all these types of disasters. If you must evacuate, listen to the local authorities for instructions. Take your disaster supply kit. Wear appropriate clothing. Turn off all lights and appliances. Dispose of or take perishable foods and lock your home. If you're instructed to leave your home, also use travel routes specified by local authorities. In your family plan, write or draw out several evacuation route options, since some streets and roads may be closed. Take pets to a pre-designated animal shelter. Know where to go for shelter. This may be a public shelter, hotel, or family or friend's home. Having your family plan two places to meet if family members are separated during an emergency, one in your neighborhood and one outside your neighborhood. The neighborhood site should be used if you're all home or in the nearby area when the disaster happens. However, if you're not all home when the disaster strikes, family members who are away may not be allowed into the area. So you need a place to meet outside the neighborhood. Also, this meeting place is to reconnect if you evacuate in multiple vehicles and get separated. Be aware of school plans for students and for those in child care. Children will be subject to the school's or care center's rules and not allowed to leave without a parent or other pre-designated adult. If your school or care center doesn't have an emergency plan, consider helping create one. Also, what is the emergency plan at your workplace? Cooperate with others to develop evacuation and shelter-in-place plans and meeting places. Family communication plans establish contacts for families in case they are separated or disoriented in a disaster. During an emergency, it might be easier to make a phone call out of state, so designate a single relative or friend as an out-of-state contact. If family members are separated, 
This contact can help account for each person and relay information for your family. Work with your family to complete a contact card for each member and discuss the information with children. The more they're involved in the creation of the directory, the more likely they will remember to use it in high stress times of disaster. Have family members keep these cards handy in wallets, purses, backpacks, and other places. You also may want to send one to school with each child to keep in the school file. Don't assume your cell phone contacts list will be available. Include in your family emergency plan a photo of each family member, including pets that may get lost. In the event of total loss, these may be the only photos you will have. You also want to consider fingerprints or dental records for identifications. Identikit passports, social security cards, divorce decrees, marriage certificates, death certificates, insurance policies, medical records, financial records, cash, wills, and power of attorneys to name a few. Now that you have all of this documentation printed out and on a flash drive or in the cloud, organize it as part of your grab and go disaster kit. Place your items in a paper folder or envelope with like documents together and mark each envelope. Next, place these inside sealed, airtight and waterproof plastic bags. In case of extremely high temperature, the plastic could melt. If it melts directly onto your items, you will have a big mess. That is why you put them inside a thick paper folder or envelope and then put them inside the plastic bag. Special waterproof and fireproof bags may be purchased or high quality freezer bags may be used. Now store the plastic bags in a durable sealed box, preferably a locking one. A portable fireproof and waterproof box is recommended. Try to find one that is easy to grab. Remember you're making a to-go box, something easy to pick up at a moment's notice. A big bulky cardboard box or plastic tub may not be practical. Companies that manufacture safe boxes make them highly resistant to fire, flood, heat, earthquakes, hurricanes, explosions, or other disastrous conditions. However, the key word here is resistant. There is no 100% guarantee against damage and substantial losses sometimes occur. If you have a box, be sure that you have a key in a secure place. Store your grab and go documents box in a safe and secure location near your disaster supplies kit where it's easily accessible. Learn what methods your local officials use to warn the community if there's a disaster. The Emergency Alert System is a national public warning system that requires TV and radio to allow state and local authorities to deliver important emergency information to specific areas. Wireless emergency alerts allow cell phone customers to receive geographically targeted text-like messages alerting them of imminent threats to safety in their area. Several mobile apps are available that provide warnings as well. You might hear a specific siren or get a telephone call or receive a text message or see a social media post or emergency workers may go door to door. All homes should have a national oceanic and atmospheric administration weather radio since most warnings come directly from the NOAA. If you've lived in an area for a length of time, you already may know the hazards that threaten your family and property. If you're new to the area, find out what kind of disasters, both natural and man-made, are most likely to occur and how you will be notified. You can help prepare your community for disasters. Take part in community emergency response team training. Through disaster response, faith-based, and service organizations, you may be able to participate in community emergency exercises, share preparedness ideas, help communities and individuals prepare for disasters, and financially support preparedness and recovery work. Volunteers are always welcome. Your area may have a voluntary or community organizations active in disasters group. Contact your local emergency manager to learn more about ways to get involved. Help other individuals. 
Seniors and those with disabilities or other special needs may require help getting the supplies they need for their disasters kit. Extra hearing aid batteries, oxygen, medications, glasses, copies of medical records, and large whistles or bells to catch attention may be additional items for some people. Help others develop a list of individuals and doctors to contact if the need arises. Disasters disrupt hundreds of thousands of lives and cost millions of dollars every year. Sometimes they are expected, but many times they are not. Each disaster has lasting effects on both people and property, yet fewer than 40% of American families have any kind of preparedness program. You have a responsibility to yourself, your family, and your community to be prepared. Now that you've gotten a kit, made a plan, and become informed, when you are asked, are you ready? Now you can confidently say yes. Thank you for joining us today in this presentation. If you have any questions in reference to this topic or would like presentations in additional topics, feel free to call me at 210-631-0400 or email me at maaguirre at pbamu.edu. Have a great day.